Good morning, afternoon, evening, chummers, and welcome to the final episode of Shadowrun September, during which I'll be looking at the final title, as of yet, in the relatively recent Shadowrun loose trilogy of games from Harebrained Schemes. This is Shadowrun Hong Kong Extended Edition. A big part of the appeal of the Shadowrun games stems from how well they can create a believable world. Granted, a solid story and great gameplay will always be considerably more important, but without a proper setting, the games would just boil down to a few turn-based combat encounters with a bunch of reading stuffed in between them. Placing the story and gameplay within a setting that can not only support them, but actually tie them together is of critical importance. And all I can say is that Hairbane Schemes managed a wonderful job at it. You can almost smell the sea air mixed with garbage and hear some godly colored neon buzzing and flickering in the background. Everything looks as desolate, dingy and dangerous as it should be, an impression that is only heightened by the very well written text descriptions. I have to mention up front that in order to get the very most enjoyment out of the game's story, you'll have to do a serious amount of reading, much more so than during Dragonfall. Now I for one have nothing against this, I would actually love novelizations of both Dragonfall and Hong Kong stories, maybe with each companion getting their own chapter or several chapters or own books, but some might not have that particular affinity towards the written word so as to enjoy the game on a purely narrative level as well as the turn based combat one. That being said, reading is a major part of the game since Shadowrun Hong Kong isn't the usual free roaming RPG. In fact, you're quite limited to the amount of locations that you can visit, NPCs that you can interact with, and in general, the things that you can do. But as far as I'm concerned, I was so invested and focused on the story and on my companions that I didn't really feel the need for the free roaming options of an open world. I just wanted to see what else I'll get to find out about them after each run and how the story would develop further. That being said, exploring the maps in detail is very satisfactory since it will result in finding items and NPCs and sometimes even side quest givers. Compared with both its predecessors, the world you have at your disposal in Shadowrun Hong Kong seems just that bit larger. If I were to shortly describe the story, I have to say it's occasionally intense and always engrossing. Each mission or run being its own standalone story with unique characters and intrigue. The way in which you choose to interact with each mission specific characters will dictate to a certain degree how that run plays out in the end. This is just as important as your party's makeup and your choices in approaching the mission to begin with. As far as a general tip goes, not being an asshole and trying to help people will usually result in the most beneficial of results. The story starts your character off being very, very fucked and requiring the help of the underworld in order to survive and seek out the person who got you into this mess to begin with. It's a solid start even though a basic and one might say a bit tropish, but on the other hand, tropes exist for a reason, they work. Once you look at all the games in succession, like I just did over the course of this month, you notice how each one builds upon the accomplishments of the last. While Dragonfall introduced very compelling companions and interesting individual stories, Hong Kong goes further and makes the overarching story the focus and places you at the middle of it in a very interesting manner. As opposed to the first two games where the beginnings of the stories had to do with old friends and then spun into much larger things, Hong Kong's introduction has a lot more to do with family, your character's family to be exact, thus placing the player in a completely different sort of relationship with the events that are taking place because as the game goes on, the developers manage to make things seem personal and even private. They manage to do this also by splicing in some rather disturbing dream sequences relevant to the plotline. All the characters in the world seem to be having these sort of nightmares, but it was a stroke of immersive genius to actually illustrate them for the player, as opposed to simply telling you via a text description that you just had a nightmare and then describe it. Shadowrun Hong Kong brings some very interesting people that you can take with you on your runs. The great thing is that these are characters that have a story, but more importantly they also have a very personal history that you can choose to look into by talking to them after each run. Talking about one's past doesn't gel with the whole personality of being a Shadowrunner, so they'll require some coaxing. But trust me when I say that once you start talking to them, you'll be doubly interested in finishing a run. On the one hand there is the money and karma rewards, and on the other, you get to talk some more with your party about what happened in their past and as a result, find out a little bit more about them. 
they're not exactly as interesting as those in Shadowrun Dragonfall were, but they're pretty close. Keep in mind though that I might be somewhat biased, since I found it easier to identify to Dragonfall's characters since they are European and the game is set in Europe, whilst the characters from Hong Kong come from a completely different cultural background than mine. But the characters in your party are not the only places where the game's writing excels, the same can be said about the several NPCs that you'll either have to or choose to interact with. In the first camp there's your fixer, basically your manager, and a plethora of characters relevant to each mission in particular. In the second category are all the various merchants and random NPCs that don't really do anything, they're just there to add to the overall story and most importantly to the atmosphere. And saying this, I'm referring to the three old men playing Go, but there are many others of course. Going back to that difference in cultural background portrayed in Shadowrun Hong Kong as opposed to my own, I read an article after the game's initial release that explained a bit how the simple introduction of the option to address your fixer with auntie, which might seem a bit odd for most westerners, showed in fact good knowledge of Chinese customs, the term for auntie being considered both respectful and informal considering you're addressing a rather connected underworld actor, and you'll find a lot of such touches throughout the game world. Another quite prominent part of the setting and of the overall story is also a specifically Chinese one, the philosophical system of harmonizing one's environment to one's prosperous existence, or feng shui. While in our world the concept is pretty much akin to and as real as magic or belief in deities and such, in the awakened world of Shadowrun Hong Kong, Pang Shui is actual magic and its tenets are very real things that influence goings on in the world. Lurking through the BBS forums is both interesting and entertaining and offers a quick glimpse at an alternate version of the internet. Fuck bitching about movies or starting flame wars about which one is better, Marvel or DC, poetry slams are the rebel outlet of the dystopian cyberpunk future. There are also at least two very funny side stories that you can follow through the BBS forums, one of them having to do with a piece of software and the other with quite possibly the unluckiest shadow running team ever. The Matrix got seriously revamped, things look largely the same but everything is much more detailed, brighter and considerably more dynamic. The patrolling programs now have a cone of sight, which you can thankfully see, and move on some very crisscrossing and intersecting routes. You need to carefully navigate through the patrols, timing and positioning being key to either not getting detected or getting detected as late in the hack as possible. And since I mentioned hacking, the developers also made hacking somewhat challenging and even a bit nerve wracking. It's nothing more complicated than remembering the correct order of a series of increasing number of digits, but the fact that it all takes place on a timer makes the entire thing much more involving. Shadowrun Hong Kong piles on loads of replay value, especially if we compare it to Shadowrun Returns. The main difference being that in Returns case, the replay value was all based on game system and mechanics, whilst Hong Kong is worth a replay from a story standpoint as well. There are various places where you can make different decisions, especially when it comes to your party makeup, which in turn will influence your playstyle. So suffice to say that Shadowrun Hong Kong has a metric fuck ton of replay value. As far as the combat system and the classes go, what I said in my Shadowrun Dragonfall review is pretty much still valid, although I must add that Shadowrun Hong Kong seems to be a bit better balanced, either because they increase the amount of HP or of abilities or both. Regardless, when combined with the Matrix overhaul, the combat mechanics in Shadowrun Hong Kong are the best of all the three Shadowrun titles. I like to consider myself one of the few video game reviewers who put particular accent on a game's soundtrack. After all, music and sounds are always an important part of atmosphere, especially when you have such a thematic setting. Shadowrun Hong Kong soundtrack manages to blend the basics of the Shadowrun Return soundtrack with a completely different influence, one of a very Chinese nature. However, due to this influence, while it makes it work great when supporting the game, it doesn't work as well when you listen to it on its own. Whilst the Returns and Dragonfall soundtracks are still very much present on my phone and I listen to them every now and then, I can say the same about the Hong Kong soundtrack. And since I'm reviewing the Extended Edition, I should also mention what makes it extended. You get a few more runs stacked on after the end of the main storyline, and I can say that in general these runs are characterized by rather long combat encounters. A couple of them are optional, but I would suggest against skipping them since taking them will only increase your playtime and also gives you access to more karma points and money to further upgrade your character. 
Granted, only your character can continue growing. Your companions will be stuck at their last level of development, but you can still give them new weapons and whatnot. There is also a developer's commentary option available in the menu now as well, which you can turn on and listen to while you play. I could go on for a bit longer and a bit more in depth with the game, story and characters, but I hope that my point has been made fairly well by now. Shadowrun Hong Kong is a great computer RPG. It has an engrossing story, interesting characters and comes with inherent replay value. The gameplay mechanics have been fine tuned and polished, so much so that I would actually like to play the Shadowrun Returns and Shadowrun Dragonfall campaigns with Hong Kong's engine. I am curious what you girls and guys thought of Shadowrun Hong Kong, how does it stack up in your opinion? Also let me know of some other cyberpunk titles that you might want me to take a look at, be they video games or tabletop ones. Also open for suggestions in terms of books and comic books as well, just drop them down in comments. And I think it's about time for some final thoughts on Shadowrun September and the Shadowrun series. I started this look at the Shadowrun title spurred on by the results of the Larian survey, which showed that many of the respondents have never played Shadowrun Hong Kong nor the first two fallouts. And while my friends from Gaming HD have been talking about the Fallout series, and you'll find links to their videos in the description, consider them companion videos to mine. I focused on revisiting the Shadowrun series to do my part in trying to convince as many of you of how solid these games truly are. And I also hope that the title's steady increase in level of gameplay and story is reflected in my videos as well. Keep in mind that we start with a relatively simple murder mystery in Seattle, we then switch over to Europe where we deal with some interesting philosophical and political subjects, not to mention the most compelling characters in the entire series, at least in my opinion, to then end in Hong Kong, where we're plunged into a more personal type of story with arguably higher stakes than the previous ones. It's a trip around the awakened world that could have been just for show, as long as it stayed true to the basics of Shadowrun cyberpunk dystopia, you know, mega corporations trying to screw each other, magic, cybernetic implants, underworld power struggles, and a solid turn-based combat system. But the settings in the Shadowrun games aren't there just to offer a splash of local color, they're an integral part of each game's story and characters, and that's one thing that is very difficult to keep consistent, or double and then triple down on when making a video game franchise, but this is one major difference when said video game franchise is supported by its dedicated community through crowdfunding projects, instead of the subsequent games becoming diluted or streamlined or I don't know, multiplayer being shoehorned in at the publisher's demand so as to make the games more mainstream palatable. So make sure you support your favorite indie projects, that's where we're getting the most amount of innovation and interesting gameplay and stories anyway. Keep each other on chummers, Nolsheen. No